questions, save them and we can ask questions. Oh, that was a bit of feedback. Mm. Sorry, shall I go? Nisha, are we online now? Yeah. Great. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're live from the gallery with Honey Williams, who's a prolific multidisciplinary artist based in Nottingham, who has a presentation to do for us today. Um, if you have any questions, then save them till the end and you can turn on your mics and ask at the end or you can put them into the chat. We have a, a live audience here in the gallery who will also be participating in the Q&A at the end. Thank you very much. I'm handing over to Honey. OK, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? You good? That was not very convincing. <laughs> Are you good? Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, hello everyone at home. Um, welcome to my uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, I'd, I thought I'd start with Little Honey. I thought I might as well start at the beginning. And um, the reason why I got that photo is I wanted to talk about where I come from. So I come from a place called Nottingham and it's this place called St Anne's in Nottingham. And it's like a... a it, at the time, it was like a black-dominated uh, area of Nottingham. It was known as the ghetto as it went on. I don't know if you've ever heard the term Shottingham. You might be familiar with that. Uh, it later turned into that. And um, I was in a Jamaican family. My mum and dad are Jamaicans. And, um, yeah, we... We were there, but my dad lived in Manchester and he lived in Mosside. So that was like another notorious ghetto in the 80s and 90s. I don't know if you might, may or may not be aware, but I would holiday in Mosside. <laughs> if you can imagine that. So, but I wasn't aware that it was the ghetto though. I wasn't aware that it was, you know, underprivileged in any way. Um, I'd go to church a lot and I joined choirs. And that's where I developed my love of singing. But how art began was my first day at infant school. And uh, I drew this little triangular drawing. I still remember it. And we were asked to draw our home and our uh, family, you know, like how they ask you to do. And uh, this girl snatched my illustration from me. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've messed up my first day at school already. This is too early for that. And uh, my teacher, Miss Barrett, who's my favorite teacher to this day, she said, who drew this? I thought I was really in trouble. And she said, um, was it you? And um, I was like, yeah, tentatively. And she said, wow, it's amazing. This is really good, you know? This is really something. I was like, ah. <laughs> wow, I've done something right. And um, that sort of started my journey in art. So I'm going to go on to... Oops. Okay, so here we have Janogli City Technology College. It's called City Academy now and uh, later my uni in London, uh, the London College of Communication. But yeah, at school, um, it was like this fancy schmancy technology school for underprivileged kids and you had to do a test to get in and all this lot. Um, they had computers in every room. Uh, it was all brand new. This is like early 90s revealing my age there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was really prestigious. I got in, I managed to get in. Um, they, wanted, they did like an IQ test to ensure that that venture would survive um and that we would get really good marks mm, that's not that wasn't really that didn't really come to fruition but um yeah the school had lots of promise but my experience of school was that i was bullied i was bullied because i was fat because i was black um what else i have pcos which is called polycystic ovarian syndrome but i didn't know that at the time so i was bullied for the symptoms of that just I had a really hard time, but no one would really know that um, anything was wrong because I would give as good as I got, you know. Jamaican is why I say. 
so um yeah but inside i was like suffering inside so art was like art and music were like my things to go to to self-soothe from an early age and uh what happened was i was actually kicked out of art um of all lessons i was kicked out for my gcse uh because my teacher instead of getting rid of the two bullies it's, it was two guys that were bullying me uh two there was a mixed race guy and a black guy very tall six foot five just really ominous feeling um instead of getting rid of them she got rid of me and because my mum was very Jamaican and scary, I, d I just couldn't tell her that, like, she would tell me, all you have to do, honey, is go to school and learn your books. That's it, that's all I ask of you. And I couldn't even do that in my favorite subject. And um, so I never told her. And that teacher was really, she was bullying me as well, but I didn't really understand. Uh, she was being passive aggressive and gaslighty and, all of that stuff that I didn't really have any language for yet. Um, so school was a disaster. Um, college was marginally better. Uh, I did pop music, studied pop music for two years. Why did I do that? I don't know. And, <laughs> and um, I studied art and design and media. And at that college, it was New College Nottingham. Um, my teacher on the course said, when I was applying for unis, I thought I'd apply for this place, uh, Central St. Martins um, uh, and the London College Communication. Uh, and he said, no one in the history of this college has ever gotten in to that uni, but yeah, good luck, honey, good luck. Um, but um, yeah, I actually got in miraculously, couldn't believe it. Yay! <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Oh, I feel so validated. <laughs> um, yeah, it really was an achievement because there were people there from all over the world that did not know anything of how prestigious this place was at all. So naive. Um, I had no one that went to uni, like to do an artsy thing. Like my brother, my oldest brother, he's like the genius of the family. He's, he's a computer analyst. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, I got in. And when I was there, um, it was cool. I met so many fantastic people. It was kind of better outside uni, like all the things. I, I was in London. I, I was literally a country bumpkin, bumpkin. That's what they would call me. <sighs> the shade. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was there and I was meeting lots of people, but the uni experience, again, it was similar to school. I wasn't bullied, but um, the teachers didn't really understand any of the things that I was coming out with. So I was doing work about natural hair. This is pre the natural hair movement. And um, I'll go on to the next slide. So we just talk here. So this is a piece that I did whilst I was there. Um, it's called Hair Politics, and it depicts words such as strong, freaky, conscious, without the C, um, militant, sexy, ugly, picky head, which is like a derogatory term for Afro textured hair in the Caribbean. Um, beautiful, funky. Um, just loads of words that are attached to just the way that black people's hair naturally grows out of our heads. Um, we can be, um, you know, what's the word? Fired for, for having our hair, how it naturally is. And um, there's a bit more. Excluded from school. Yeah, excluded from school. Um, just deemed not marriable, not attractive, not employable, you know, all of that, just for the way that your hair grows out of your head. But my teacher at the time, Ivana, make her famous, um, she, she's from Poland. She just did not get my fascination with hair. She didn't understand. Uh, I tried to explain it to her. 
um, she she was like of the mind setting of oh, but racism isn't that bad now. Like people don't really say anything about people's hair. Like she just did not get it, um, and no one got anything that I got there. Um, my my uni uh, messed up my funding for the year, so I wasn't allowed in the building for a year. So my friends would give me crits and uh, pass on notes from um, lectures. Whilst I was there, I couldn't afford to repeat. I don't want to cry, <laughs> but that that was just really so hard, so hard. But I'm so thankful for them because I wouldn't have gotten a degree like, if I if I didn't meet them and they weren't kind enough. And I remember I used to debate with this guy called Pierre. His dad owned a French newspaper and um, I would always win, of course, <laughs> in lectures. And uh, one day he saw me and I was looking at the wall at names. I can't remember the details of what I was looking for, but I couldn't. I, I was like having problems with the next year, like paying for it because I knew I wasn't allowed in the building. People didn't know yet. And he said, oh, I'll pay for you. I'll pay for your year and like whatever you need. I was like, wow, I can't let you pay. <laughs> I can't, you know, it sounds fantastic, but I can't let you pay. Um, it's just the different lives that people are living. He, that was just nothing to him, a few thousand. It's nothing. But um, yeah, so that was uni. Uh, but at the same time at uni, um, because that was such a rubbish experience, I thought I'd concentrate on my singing whilst I was at uni. So I was just using it to do my singing in a way. Um, and so I worked with people like Rodney P, uh, Ronnie Size, um, who's a drum and bass uh, guy, in, mainly in the 90s, but obviously they're still working now. Um, Kalashnikov, who's a rapper, uh, Joe Buddha, um, he's a producer, MJ Cole, and people like this. So I was, I was getting in to the industry, like, it's like my little hands in there. But at the same time, my experience of that was that it was just really misogynistic, lots of misogynoir, that's anti-black misogyny. Um, and just no one I could really musically connect with. I was into like trip hop and I'm really influenced by uh, Blade Runner, like the film. Um, so it's kind of like dark dystopian things, but also um, people like Shaka Khan and um, Sarah Vaughan and uh, people like this. Um, I could go on and on about music, but um, I just didn't ever, I wasn't lucky enough to meet anyone who was on my vibe, if you, if you get what I mean. So, um, yeah, I kind of left the music industry. Lots of fat phobia as well, like doing music videos. It was just harrowing. But there's got to be some other different way of doing music and not having to navigate pop or underground hip hop or whatever. Anyway, we move. So, um, when I left uni, I didn't do any drawing for about eight years. It's a long time. And um, one of the things that I did do was set up a group on Facebook. It's like a Facebook blog. It was called The Picky Eds right now, but, it's, but it was called Contemporary Natural Hair. And it was all about bigging up black women and their hair and their skin. And um, yeah, because there's this big problem with skin tone as well as the hair texturism. Um, called colorism. Um, so may or may not be familiar with that, but that's like a huge, um, it's a huge, really huge issue with black people, obviously other colonized races too, like people is, it's a problem across the world really. Um, and it can change your life course, like how light you are. And I, I'm very aware that I'm a light skinned person and I have to try and check that that one bit of privilege that I feel that I've got, like well, one of a couple. Um, use it to attract people to the space and then big up dark skinned people and Afro textured type four hair, they call it. 
um, Afro textured people. Just to redress the balance in some kind of small way. So we do um, events and things like that. So yeah, that's that. It still exists, the picky ads, if you want to have a look. Uh, another thing that I did <laughs> was I joined a samba band randomly. So you don't know this. And um, just because I love Brazilian music. And uh, see, well, no one's listening. They don't know. Uh, they're based in Nottingham. <laughs> And they, it was just all really, really white, like a, a really white samba band. Me and this other woman, <laughs> if, if you can picture it, uh, this other woman, she was mixed race, the older lady. And we, they, they'd have all the drums and the fancy schmancy stuff. And I was on an agogo and she was on a tambourine, like forever. We were just... <laughs> So it's really pathetic. And I can play the drums, you know, so I can, I can play a drum kit. So it's like, is this ever going to change? Like, <laughs> I want to do something cultural and interesting, but this is not the one. So, and I, hang on, hang on let me just take a drink. Yeah. So I wasn't feeling it. You know, who could blame me? So I thought I'd start up something, like a singing thing. I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And randomly, again, I was asked to do this interfaith festival, which again, that was flawed, um, as a concept. <laughs> um, when, I was, when I was younger, I was in a gospel choir. I was in quite a few gospel choirs. I had to go to church. My mum would give me two choices. Either you go to church or you get some licks and you still have to go to church. So you cho you choose, it's up to you. So I'd go. But the music bit of church, I really enjoyed. And this guy called Freddie Kofi, who's really famous in Nottingham, um, he's taught everybody how to sing who's involved in singing there. And he, I was in one of his choirs and um, a few of the people that I knew from that, I asked them to be a part of this interfaith festival to pretend to be Christians, which is bad. Um, don't do that. Um, never do that. <laughs> we pretended to be Christians just to get paid. It's really, really, really terrible. But anyway, we went along. We were at one stage. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, we went along and we were singing to like Sikhs and Muslims and Jews, like, yes, Jesus loves me. And they're just like sitting there, well, sounds nice, but we don't really agree. Like, <laughs> what you say, it didn't work, it didn't work. But what we realized is that we sound really good together. We had that connection. It was really easy, like the harmonies rang together. It was really good. And as we were, we were rehearsing uh, one day, um, some workmen went past. This sounds like a really 80s cheesy film, but workmen went past and said, oh, you lots are like a gang of angels, you do. So that's where we got our name, Gang of Angels, GOA. Um, all comes together. But um, yeah, I'm just really grateful for these people uh, that have been in the choir. There's been loads of people that have been in the choir. A lot of people have been there for a long time when they join. It's like a choir family. I'll come back to that in a, later on. Uh, yeah, singing. I try to keep up with singing. Uh, I was part of a poetry collective called the Mouthy Poets, and we performed in places around the world. Actually, this, this that's from um, the Nottingham Playhouse, but. We were lucky enough to go to Germany, Brunswick, uh, Karlsruhe. Um, it, it was just, I went to Switzerland, I went to France. It was really, really cool, really positive. And I got to perform there too. So this brings me to my diary. So whilst I was doing all this, I was applying for lots and lots of graphic design jobs, which is what I actually studied at uni. I didn't even tell you what I studied. I, I, I got a degree in graphic media design and illustration. Um, 
so this is this is what would happen normally i would go to the interview i was i'd be all chic if i don't mind saying so myself and uh all black laptop portfolio things like this um i tell you about one incident in particular i went i traveled down from nottingham to london and so that's already long it's long and then um I arrive and the receptionist, she said, oh, you come for the cleaning job? Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? You come for the cleaning job. So um, I was like, trying not to be like furious, like the instant rage, like, I'm a graphic designer. I'm a graphic designer. Not that there's anything wrong with being cleaner, but I'm a graphic designer. And, and she instantly changed her face, dropped. And then the guy that came to interview me was like, oh, you're the graphic designer? So it's like twice uh, the shock of it. <sighs> so I had a lot of experiences like that. And I'd go, I'd be having the interview. And I said to you, didn't I, Pasha, that it'd normally be this guy, white guy with a beard called Josh or something. <laughs> and um, he... He's shocked to see me and I'm, you know, making him laugh, being all witty and uh, I can talk about stuff that he likes. What does he like? Football? Messi? Ronaldo? <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Getting the rapport and the banter Well, yeah, you know, mighty boosh. What do you like? What do you like? I can do it all. I can do it all. You know? I'm fluent in white man, you know. So, but, but you know, if you're a person of colour, you kind of have to be, if you're a, a woman, those spaces are not only totally white, they're totally male as well. So if you're a, any kind of woman going in for a graphic design job, you're going to have a job, unless you're fit. <laughs> you know, white, young, able-bodied, cisgendered, you know the drill. But, um... Anyway, there's my diary. That's my diary. So I thought, oh yeah, and I wouldn't get any job. I never got any kind of job in graphic design. Um, so um, my diary, I started drawing in my diary after eight years because I thought I better, I better start using this again for myself because I'm going to forget how to do it. You know, I'm not going to have that same connection to it anymore. Um, so I started just drawing in it. But one friend of mine, she said, isn't it a shame that no one's going to see this though, honey? It's a shame that no one's going to see it. And I was like, God. What sort of scale is that? It's A6. It's very little. Yeah. Yeah. So this is before all my secrets and stuff have been put in it, really. But now it is now covered in whatever shenanigans I was getting up to at the time. Um, so I, I kept that up and just, I do it every single day. Um, and I started to get a lot of workshops, um, being like people asking me to do workshops. And one of them, this is not the name of the workshop because who would come to it? <laughs> the blissful sleep of young black and mixed race men, like no one will come to that. But um, <laughs> that's the name of my blog post anyway. But um, I was asked to do this workshop because they were looking for a strong black woman and they, they wanted someone to um, instill a bit more respect for black girls on the course because they realized that black girls were being treated particularly badly uh, by black boys, black and mixed race boys, like teasing them, bullying them. And so well, I was like, oh, well, I can help with this. Yeah. So we looked at stuff like, uh, we Googled the word beautiful, and you can still do it to this day. Um, uh, what comes up, it's a bit better now, but still pretty bad. It's just white, really white. Um, uh, like beautiful woman. Yeah. And we watched videos, we talked, we debated, and, you know, I was getting them to think about things more, you know? Anyway, 
more. I, I was asked to do more. There was one called um, The Art of Centering Black Women Whilst Making White Privilege More Visible to White People. So uh, that was for baby therapists. I've got this friend, Emma Tickle. Big up. Uh, she's a therapist teacher. She teaches baby therapists. And um, basically, the therapist that we were teaching was so clueless about anything to do with culture. They didn't know about colorism, misogynoir, intersectionality, none of it, none of it, none of it, none of it. So it's, it's just really crazy how culture is not required when you're a therapist. How can you help anyone that's different to yourself if, if, you, if that's not a thing that you're centering on? Um, anyway, here's some more. How much time have I got left? Is this too long? Yeah, we're Okay. I can talk, you know, I can talk. <laughs> anyway, okay, so moving on. Um, I start, my name started getting around because of that. And uh, then I was given commissions. Uh, people found out I could draw, not I wasn't just a singer, I could draw. Um, so there, there's this organization called Digging Deep by Norma Gregory. And basically it's about honoring black coal miners in Britain. Um, this was in 2018. And um, this piece is called No Joke. Um, Norma named it actually. I didn't, I didn't actually give it a name, but she just gave it a name. And um, basically, it was a workshop where people that were differently abled came together and they did the background of the piece, like the black and white. So all that's black and white photos of miners and all that history, it's all behind him. And then I had like about 10 minutes to put something on top. So I just threw him on top. It's A, a zero. So it's, it's a huge, basically it's a mural. It, when it gets that big, it's, you start getting into mural size. So yeah. Just threw it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next thing. Um, okay, so as you, as I told you about the diaries, uh, I've been doing the diaries. Um, there was this competition, uh, public prize award um, at the New Art Exchange. The New Art Exchange is a place that was set up for black artists to showcase their work. And then it turned into black and Asian people to showcase their work. And then it turned into Black, Asian, and maybe Eastern European, Romani, possibly. And then it's turned into just sort of vaguely someone who is a bit different. Let me celebrate your work. But no shade to New Art Exchange. They do a lot of good work. And um, yeah. <laughs> They do, they do. I've, I've known everyone who's worked there as well. Um, yeah, I've known them for a long time. But anyway, um, I thought, shall I enter this uh, uh, competition? Oh, God, 700 applicants. Is there, I mean, is there any point? And, um, and I entered it, and my mum wouldn't come to the um, ceremony at the end, because she said, if you don't get it, I'm going to bomb the place. <laughs> That one's terrible. <laughs> so, um, but I won. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's about 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres. It's not like huge. And you had all these huge pieces around it and everything. It's still one. Um, and it says most hated and copied. Basically, it's about all the stuff that I've been talking about. And it's literally just a page in my diary that I blew up um, with a drawing on top. Yeah. Uh, Photoshop, the background, it's literally a page of my diary. And this, is, the woman is like, yeah, I did use Photoshop. It's a painting and then Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, let me move on. You're going to get grilled by the artists in the room. 
<laughs> do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready for you. Ready. Okay. So, um, when I was in Mouthy Poets, I met this woman called Bridie Squires, and she was a poet too. And she ended up being the editor of Left Lion magazine. So then she asked me to to do the cover of it one time. And she said, you can do it about whatever you want, honey. I don't care. You, you'll do a good job. So at, the t at that can moment... Can you hear it back? Can you hear it again? Yeah. So at that moment in time, um, the Windrush scandal just hit. And they were literally sending Jamaicans, Caribbeans back to Jamaica after they'd been here like 50 <clears throat> years and, you know, all kinds of ridiculousness like that was taking them away in the night, you know? Um, the hostile environment and all that. Uh, so I thought I'd do it about that. And I, I would zoom in, but I, I, won't, I won't mess up what's going on, uh, um, no. But within the piece, there's lots of religious iconography, um, there's stuff about Nottingham riots, when they had the Brixton riots, they had Nottingham riots too. Um, slavery references, Windrush, uh, the ship and everything, bits of patwa interlaced there. Um, so that was really, um, I really wanted to do something really like soulful and deep and layered um, because I'm talking about my parents and grandparents, you know, and all the sacrifices and stuff. Okay. So um, this opportunity came up uh, with the British Council. Um, my friend Sazizo Fieri, she's a curator from Nottingham. She's absolutely phenomenal. Um, she, she passed on this ad, someone else passed on the ad, so I thought, oh my God, I have to, I have to do this. Um, basically, it was an opportunity from the British Council to honour the Windrush generation in Jamaica as a muralist, can you imagine? <laughs> and the deadline was the next day. So, I just spent the whole day doing this thing and I got it checked by friends and stuff. It's important that you have that. And um, they chose me. And so the next week I was due to fly out. It's just absolutely out of this world. I met such cool people, Rosie Chung um, from Studio 174. Um, just amazing woman. and. I met, I made so many friends out there, and yeah, I couldn't believe I was being paid to draw in, in Jamaica. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Um, so that was amazing. And now that these, oh, I should explain the scale. Um, they're eight foot by four foot each one. So if you can imagine that. And they're in um, the Norman Manley Airport as you come into Jamaica, Kingston, everybody sees it. I put my, I put my um, Instagram thingy on there. So people occasionally like message me. So I've got connections all around the place, all around the earth now. Um, yeah, fun times. Um, then I was given another commission. I mean, I've been given quite a few commissions. I'm only telling you about a couple. <laughs> But um, this one was from Nottingham Trent University. So after George Floyd was murdered and the whole Black Lives Matter thing blew up, like I found, it's just so dark how the amount of work came my way after that. I was asked to do this and asked to do that, asked to do talks like this, like, sorry to say, but, um, all of a sudden, people were interested in what I had to say. Um, I'm like, mm, where were you, like, in 2004 when I was talking about hair and, like, mm, okay. Uh, you can see it now. It's on trend now. I'm not sure how trendy it is right now. But um, uh, this piece is called Snaky Friends. 
and it says end structural racism in Britain. It's pretty self-explanatory, much like the left lion front covers. It's really layered and um, intricate and there's lots of history interwoven throughout all of this. Um, yeah, I'll move on from that. Uh, last year I was asked to do um, a mural of this man called Eric Irons OBE who was the dad of that woman that I was playing the agogo go with. It's just coincidence. <laughs> Weird coincidence. She hadn't mentioned any of this though. This guy was an RAF pilot, uh, like a hero in World War II. And in 1958, he, he managed to become a judge, like in Nottingham. Now, how... Oh, did you? I met him. I used to work for the African Paragon Friends Family Centre. Wow. We did a whole exhibition with the kind of um, army and RAF experience. Oh. He, came, he, he led the, it was called something like the, I can't remember, but it was an organisation that he led for decades, which brought together all of the West Indian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But at the time, it was called something like the West Indian Service Men's Organisation. Wow. It was a phenomenal man. Yeah. 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 Really passionate. And at the time, there mm. were about 30 ex-servicemen mm. around Nottingham and Derby that were Wow. And had like rich photographs from their time and stories. Was that in the 80s? Yeah, that's yeah. the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a guess. It's just betting it was in the 80s. Uh, wow. 80s, 90s. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the, these people called the Nottingham Project, they asked me to do this mural. Um, and my cousin, is a graffiti artist in Nottingham and he got me on the project. So he's the reason, he's called Soz Mate. Um, if you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna um, look up his work. And um, yeah, they hadn't researched Mr. Eric Irons because he, he was this fabulous, clever, formidable character and he helped set up the ACNA Centre, the ACFF Centre, it's probably what you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, in Nottingham, that are really uh, like cultural hubs for Caribbean people, black people in general, to be honest, in uh, Nottingham. But he was also, he, he was known for, well, people, black people would not want him to judge them because he would give them extra time. Yeah. Yeah, he was very about respectability politics. He would see, a, like this guy from Birmingham. I can't remember his name, but he, he's on. He runs the criminology course there or something. I can't, I can't remember. Good. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, no, you stuck. Um, <laughs> I met him whilst I was doing another project, and he he told me when he met Eric Irons, he was told to stand up straight. Why? Yeah, like that. Yeah. No ramping with Mr. I, I, he was, he was like scary, yeah. So ideally I'd like to celebrate a black woman, to be honest, like from history. <laughs> you see the bit, mm, would I want, if I had my choice, would I have chosen this dude? But they chose me because I'm, a, I'm black, basically. You'll do it. Yeah, my cousin is mixed race, but he didn't commission it. Nottingham Project commissioned it. Yes, they are white. And they're under the Nottingham City Council. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, look at the time that era that he was born into. Yeah. Yeah, he was in the military, so he had that way about him. Yeah. Mm. Favoritism. Yeah. 
Yeah, you have to be seen to be like, yeah, I'm extra harsh on these people. Like, I, I, you know, but he was worse than the white people at the time for that, and he was known for that. Black people in Nottingham did not like him. He was known as a coconut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then the white people were were not feeling him. <laughs> he couldn't win. Like he, there was no way he could win. You'd have to be that kind of Mach Machiavellian character to, in order to become a judge in the 1950s as a dark-skinned guy, because it's that would be a feat now, like to do that now. So to do that then, I, ca I can't even imagine. Really smart guy. So I thought, well, he's worth celebrating anyway. He's he should be in a film, to be honest. He's a film waiting to happen. But um, so I started this mural. And there's a team that do it as well. And uh, then the next day after I'd worked on it, um, my friend, Sazizo, she contacted me and said, honey, you're on the news. I was like, what the blood clot is going on? <laughs> I'm on the news, why? What, what are they saying about me on the news? And um, I'm in the papers and everything. And they had had an unveiling of my mural without me. They didn't invite me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't invite me and it was unfinished. Yeah, so this isn't finished. This is not how it's meant to look. Um, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see how it was meant to look. But um, the likeness in his face, I mean, you've seen my other work. So to see that it's not terrible or anything, but it wasn't finished, just wasn't finished. Um, so yeah, it is really bad and they're still trying to make it up to me now, like the Nottingham City Council. It's just, just a mess, a complete mess. Um, I missed out on so much what publicity. <laughs> well, that's not for this conversation today, but, um, you know, they'll be giving me something. They'll be giving me something anyway, but. I'll carry on anyway, that's that. So, um, <laughs> this is me being a DJ. This is random. <laughs> so, um, one of my friends in the choir uh, had run Pride in Nottingham. And um, he said, you know, you could do it, honey. You could do it. You know music, well, you, you know. Can I do it? I thought, go on then, I'm going to do it. Like, when am I going to get a chance to do this? So I've always wanted to try it. So I thought, oh, I'll have a go at DJ it. And I love it. Oh, my God. And the first DJ gig at Pri Pride. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Crazy. I loved it. And my choir performed there as well. Because we're kind of like a quirky, avant-garde kind of choir, you know we performed there too so that was really fun um so moving on uh here's my work that i got an art art residency at this place called city arts and i hadn't heard of city arts but they have been around all my life which gives you an idea as to how white they must have been because no one black knew about what city arts it's called city arts as well so you'd think it'd be this long established no only a certain type of people knew about it and before i was given the residency they did this um sort of think tank with some black artists because again racism started to exist when you know george floyd died so we were brought in to talk about <laughs> sorry we talk it brought in to talk about racism. So some of it was black, some of it was Asian, mixed race, you know. So basically, City Arts allowed us to cuss them for, you know, for a couple of hours, because that's basically what we did. We've been here all this time. We've never heard of you. Like, what have you been doing? You only employ white people. Da -da -da -da. We were really harsh with them. We were really real with them. Uh, they changed management, so it wasn't really the people's fault that we were talking to but and they took it all on board 
They took it all on board. I'll give it to them. Uh, they gave me an art residency and this is the first time that I produced any work for me that is huge. Um, last year, sadly, I got COVID and I almost died of it. I was in um, intensive care and everything. I, the doctors told me that I was going to die, which is, that's real. Like, um, but when I was in recovery, I thought, oh God, I just, I want to do some art. I want to do something really huge. I want to, I want to, I want to sing. I want to do, I, I was just like, ah! <laughs> I was so itching. Like I can feel the feeling now, like, oh my God, I don't want to die. I don't, it's not time to die. So when I did this, all that was coming out, like pouring onto my work. And um, yeah, I was, because COVID was around and it was locked down, I was given this huge space to do all this work in. So COVID has been bad to me, but it's been good to me at the same time in a weird way. Um, so yeah, I was, I, I was able to produce work like this. Um, and that's, you can get an idea of the scale. A lot of them are five foot or six foot. Um, yeah. Thank you, thank you. huge no it's the same thing to me almost um yeah i hadn't really thought about that well it's a real skill yeah because people go from tiny to massive like the scale of art it's quite something to be able to do the thing nobody can do that yeah okay Well, I think as a big black woman, you're always on the periphery of everything and you never accept it. Well, I won't say never. Some people, it works out for them. But um, you may not be accepted for what you want to do, for what you're aiming for. I mean, I only wanted to be a graphic designer because I thought that I'd get paid lots of money. I could have a BMW. <laughs> Eve. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd just be an artist on the side and I'll, I'll have a BMW in like, you know, a loft apartment. Oh, it's drinks. <laughs> I was going to live in Notting Hill. Oh, were you? Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice choice. Never happened. Did it happen? No. Okay. Well, yeah, that was the plan. But my art teacher at the time, one of them, I used to do life drawing with he said you're an artist you are you're an artist and he knew it's like he could see that I, that's what you are I mean I don't care what you're trying to think that you are but that's what you are he was right the end <laughs> thank you any more questions hit me Let's take some questions. I want to. Um, Nisha, can 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 you hear it when people speak from the audience? You can. People can hear it from the audience. Okay. We repeat the questions. So we'll repeat the questions back. Um, thank you so much, honey. That was awesome. And to hear like your journey through so much adversity mm. and pushing through and all the incredible things that you've been able to do despite all the difficulties and the challenges. Mm. And um, yeah, some serious stuff that you've had to work through and against. Mm. Yeah. So any questions from the floor? I'm ready. Jasmine. Mm -hmm. um, so the question was asking Honey about the work that Honey has developed in relation to since 
yeah. the Black Lives Matter movement resurfaced, even though it's existed for a long time? Hmm. Um, well, it was just like a kick in the teeth, really. Like it, it, it was a really weird feeling because literally I'd seen this guy get murdered on the internet quite a few times, not even trying to see it. Not even trying to see it, I just saw it. Um, he could be my dad, my brother, you know? And it's like, well, not even my relative, it doesn't have to be my relative, but... Um, it just made me feel sick. It made me feel sick and it made me feel validated all this time that I was talking about this stuff. I was actually right, and you, you know, the world's not gaslighting me. Is it, there is actually a problem and it does need to be looked at. Uh, at the same time, it was really good because I, I had money. Like, it's just a weird set of, like a weird assortment of feelings to put together. Um, I kind of felt really resentful as well. Um, very mixed emotions on it. Yeah. It's like, isn't it obvious? And I can imagine, you know, it seems like you were very aware of, like, biases and discrimination from quite a Yeah. 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 I can imagine it being such a... Yeah, I mean, I was lucky to have two really like overly educated parents. My, my dad was a detective in Jamaica and um, just like trying to get away with stuff with my dad was impossible, <laughs> as you can imagine. But um, he was really knowledgeable about black history and we would talk about it. I love, I love learning about history and geography and all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, I was made overly aware, even like so aware of what position black people were in um, all over the world. You know, Patrice Lumumba, we, we talk about everything. And I'd be like seven. <laughs> um, so it, make, it makes it really hard to relate to people when you know, when you have all this stuff. Very intense. What an intense little child. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so I learned about that, and I was learning about music as well. My my brother's a jazz guitarist, so I knew about lots of jazz people, as well. <laughs> jazz and gospel. Very, very weird child, I must have been. Intelligent, yeah. Um, kids are mostly anti-intellectual, though, aren't they? So you're just gonna get you're just gonna get bullied. So, uh, but anyway, what was the question? I Sorry, I <laughs> did I answer it? I think you Yeah, yeah, perfectly put. I love the way I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> yeah. Any other yeah. questions from the floor? Joy. That's all right. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I feel like this is like you. Yeah. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, I wanted to go. Oh, go on. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say with the periphery thing, what you, when you're any kind of intersexual, high, highly intersectional, person um you end up in in the periphery of things most of the time and you get to see how things work and because you're on the outside looking in all the time and you end up having to develop parts of yourself that you probably wouldn't have ventured into had this constant you know, sexism racism fat phobia you know whatever else antennae I call yeah. them antennae because yeah. you pick up on things that other people maybe aren't picking up on because you yeah. practice to survive. That's yeah. how I experience that yeah, intersectionality. Definitely. 
Superpowers. Yeah. Totally superpowers. <laughs> you're so multi-pronged, like, but you have to be for survival. Like, you're just not, you're not going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Mm. Excellent question. You're going to repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> Come to the front. <laughs> So Joy was just talking about trauma and the, the multi-layered aspect of how we experience trauma as, as black people and um, working in white spaces and I'm not doing very well at re... And the, the question is how do you find you in that and, and, and journey that in a safe way? Is mm. that okay? Mm. Um, I did this talk one time and uh, with all black people, black and mixed race people. And we were just talking candidly about things. And they had organized after for there to be a therapist, the black therapist for us to have like a debrief after we'd spoken about stuff. So things like that, like building them into an experience I think is the way forward because if I think about how I apply that to myself and my work I don't I don't I haven't been that great to myself you know um I really need to factor that in more like how is looking at these intimate topics that really greatly affect me and people that look like me um how's it going to affect me once I've done I hadn't really con contemplated it before so when I did those huge pieces of work, at the same time that Eric Irons thing was going off. So I had such a weird, trippy feeling when I was coming up with that, because just too many emotions to process at once with one person. Um, and like the COVID thing, a nurse, uh, well, no, she was a doctor. She called me a year to the day after I'd um, gone through all that stuff. And as soon as she started talking about it, she, she said, oh, I remember you, you're called Honey, I remember your name. And um, she was saying that a, a person was dying next to you. And I felt that, I knew that they were dying next to me in intensive care. And it was chaotic, really dark lit. It was like a sci-fi film. Everyone was like in a space suit at that point. So you could just see people's eyes. Very odd experience. But um, I just cried down the phone. And I just put it, put it away. I put all that stuff away and I hadn't realized how much it was affecting me, you know? And, oh, I can cry on cue about that. But um, all of it, you really, whenever you're doing any work, all of you, you really need to take into how, if you're gonna share this thing, factor in how you're gonna cope after. Like, what are you gonna do to cope? whether it's seeking therapy, talking to a certain person, da 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 da. Mm. 
Thank you. No, no one's ever asked me that. They can't. Because like I've been on the periphery, they've been in on the inside and like on the pedestal, like from day dot, you know. Um, I remember when I got to uni and the first talk was by this guy called Biggles. <laughs> it's very, this posh white dude is very, he was really posh though, like super duper posh. And he was saying, hello to all of you, some of you, um, will go on to be very successful designers, but some of you will end up working as a shop till assistant. He said that, yeah. And um, he was he was right, but um, not very aspirational. <laughs> it's not, is it? Um, but he he didn't say all the stuff that I said that I told you, like. You, there'd be people that are in positions of power that won't let you have the role and they, you didn't explain any of that yeah skill the amount of basic and mediocrity that gets the position that that i need therapy for that because <laughs> alone um yeah if you're a black woman you can't there's no being basic you have to knock it out the park yeah, yeah, it is. <sighs> oh, to... Yeah. Mm. Go for it. Mm. So, Joy is talking about <laughs> colorism <laughs> and how, as a person who's lighter skin, can um, know when to step back and know that this is the, the time to give somebody with darker skin the, the space. Mm. How do we navigate that? Do we do that? Do we hand over space? And um, what else did you say? <clears throat> Oh, also, Joy yeah. talked about growing up in a white space where maybe that makes um, her more palatable to white people because she speaks the language mm. and doesn't come from an inner city background. So just kind of discussing. I think yeah. you and Joy just need to sit down and talk. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Um, 
God, I don't know. The question is, I don't know. That is the answer, I don't know. Um, no, 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 it's a huge question. No, I need the pressure, it's good. Um, I think, because I kind of see myself as just sort of climbing, it's, it's hard to then say, okay, I won't do that thing and I'll let a dark skinned person do that because I'm like struggling myself, you know? Um, so it's like, how do you do it? But when I get to a more stable situation, I know that I'll definitely want to do that more. Um, I want to do it now. Um, because I, I see it go down, like who gets the opportunities? Like the natural hair movement now is insane. Yeah. Like it's a lot of mixed race people going, oh, how I, yeah. my, my swishing about their hair. It's like, mm, it wasn't about you. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, I know like when I, because I worked in arts management and I'm light skinned, mm. very light skinned. And um, I would look around and in arts management, the non-white people were light-skinned mm. and spoke in these kind of BBC voices. Oh, yeah, Starling, yes. And it was like, hello, yeah. Yeah. what is it about me that got this position? Whoops. And people feel more comfortable with you. I mean, just about with me, just more comfortable with me and soon find out. But, but you don't Why not? Do you not want to become that? I don't care. I don't care about that. Um, using nepotism to just pick people, whether they're fantastic or not. I just think, no, not so much. You've got to give people a chance. Give people, you know, white people. I don't want to feel like I'm attacking you here today, but they get... <laughs> <laughs> they get so much opportunity, whether they're good or not. Yeah. I get that. I Johnny's get representing that. the white men in the house. <laughs> yeah, Johnny. <laughs> it is true. I feel like there's so much bias. Yeah. 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 The implicit bias is within me, it's within yeah. everybody. And everybody has uh, privilege, everybody has privilege. Um, but more, some people have more systemic oppressions that are going against them than others. Um, I take that into consideration over like being the most super duper talented. So what if you're the most super duper talented person? Really, it's not just about talent the people that get through. It's not just about talent. It's about what kind of a person you are. What's your personality like? Are you enthusiastic when you show up? Like, do people want to be around you of a day? You know, it's all these other things that are involved. It's not just about the super talented person. Um, that's amazing if you are super talented. Um, yeah, but yeah, give people a chance. So she's just about good enough. All right. Okay, let her in. Give her a chance. In context with everybody else. I'm gonna wrap this and get you to chat with Honey afterwards <laughs> because I wanna open the floor to other people and I'm conscious yeah. that people online can't necessarily hear your voice and you're saying some brilliant things. So anyone else want to say anything? Artists in the house, do you wanna talk about? Yes, Louisa. Okay. Okay, so when I'm at home, I put together a playlist 
of how I'm feeling at the time. And um, so basically DJ for myself. So I'm not having to change anything once I get into the studio. So I go down to the studio, got my playlist, got my spray paint, acrylics. Um, I use sticky tape. I don't know, there must be some kind of deep Freudian reason why I use that. I don't know why. Um, and um, what else do I use? Sharpies, graffiti pens. Um, yeah. And I, I work on blinds. So the, the, the images of big work, like portraiture of me, basically, is on blinds, like really massive blinds. And what, like window blinds? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're all wow. blinds. Yeah, 100% polyester, if that helps. Uh, and I basically attack it. Just, I just start attacking it. And it feels so good to do that. I mean, maybe that's a workshop for the future, like just attacking blinds. I don't know. It's a bit weird. <laughs> Niche. So what was that, sorry? Physical. Very physical. Uh, I'll play podcasts as well sometimes or films, but it's mostly music. And I do it at night. Um, I'm very nocturnal when I do art. <laughs> yeah, so I'm right next to an Indian takeaway, which is just, they're so good. Desi Downtown, big up Desi Downtown. Um, <laughs> they know my name. <laughs> yeah. Both. Yeah, yeah whatever comes to my mind um sometimes i'll i'll have something in my diary that i quite like that i want to blow up maybe but i go i basically i do an abstract and then uh further on i'll start doing figurative work over the top so nisha do we have any questions on the chat Sorry? Do you have plans to show any new work? Do you have plans to show any new work? Yes, I do. What's what's her name? What's her name? Lala. Thank you, Lala, because I always forget the next step. So, on March the 12th, I'm going to have my own sort of, how can I describe it? It's an experience, um, a music, live art mashup at the New Art Exchange, the ones where I, dissing, I was dissing earlier. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be my own show just featuring me and um, yeah, it's called Shrines and it's about, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on my Instagram what it's about, um, but it's still being conjured up as we speak. So it's, it's cutting it fine, I know, but. And your Instagram oh, it's is at the honey effect. It's that above my head. Yeah. So I have a question which is about the multidisciplinariness of your work. The painting, the illustration, the murals, the singing, mm -hmm. the musicality. Yeah. Um, how do you choose? It's, it's so eclectic, or is this where you're going and you're going to bring it together? What? How do I choose? It's been haphazard in the past. I've just gone with whatever's having the most positive, like receiving me the most positively. So I've gone that in that direction. Um, yeah, that's that's what basically what I've done. Uh, art is... I'm doing all of them at the same time. I, I found a way to channel all of them into one thing, and that's the show that's coming up. Um, but it is tough. Like, if you're good at more than one thing, like, what do you concentrate on? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wanted to mention that... I didn't mention this. When I didn't get the graphic design jobs, I got um, teaching jobs because my friend was a DJ and they needed a teacher to fill in one time. 
So he said, oh, you could do it, honey. So I ended up being a teacher by accident. Uh, so I lectured in Nottingham, uh, West Nottinghamshire College as a music garage band kind of produ music production kind of person. Then I did, um, I taught singing at Trent and I taught graphic design at West Nong Nottinghamshire College. So I've been a teacher. I forgot to say, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the floor? I think we need to give plenty of You're probably bored of me oh, by now. Another question. <laughs> what about my singing? Sorry? Oh yeah, it's in, it's, didn't you hear? It's in my show. Hello. <laughs> Can mom people wake up. Um, yeah, it's gonna be in my show, March the twelfth. Um, uh, yeah, I expect dystopia and opulence. There you go. I can give you that. I know you mm. referenced Blade Runner and Sarah Vaughan and um, Shaka Khan. Yeah, yeah. Have you fully embraced that those aspects of your 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 love of those things in your work? Okay. Well, because I've been directing a choir for quite some time, I think I set it up in about 2008. So I've known them for quite a long time. I think I set that up in a way to kind of hide, kinda, and not be that person at the front and not be under that scrutiny anymore. Like, it doesn't really matter if I'm fat and black and all that kind of stuff, because I'm not the main focus in a choir, so it's how convenient of me to do this elaborate rouge so I can go around singing. But um, now I've purposely turned the spotlight on myself and I'm putting myself front and centre. That's really scary, guys. It's very scary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, just because I just deserve it, I owe it to myself, like to focus on myself. Why not focus on myself? Um, um, you know, remembering the little honey, I did singing because I liked it. I just liked it. It wasn't monetized. I just wanted to do it, and I did art for the same reason. You know. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Go on, Desmond. One um, more. Can I just say? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Oh, thanks. Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Jasmine's very eclectic. Yeah. If you see her space, she's doing yeah, a bit nice, of this, nice a bit of that. So it must be really nice for her to meet you. Ah. Yeah. Then I, can, okay. I Mm. Well, I think we're going to bring this to a close and Honey's going to be around, I think, for a little while if you guys want to stay and chat. And I want to thank Honey for being here and giving an amazing presentation. Oh, really thank inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Really inspiring. Thank you very much. Thanks. And thank you to everybody who joined online. Thank you for your questions. And we're going to say goodbye to you now. Would you like to say goodbye, honey? Bye, everyone. Big up to all of you. Thank you for tuning in. Tune in next time. <laughs> 12th, March the 12th. March New the 12th. Arts Exchange, not Nottingham. In a, not Leicester. Not in a... <laughs>